What's going on ladies and gents? Welcome to another episode of Super Smash Bros. Wii U Classic Mode. In the last episode, we cleared Classic Mode as Bowser, and in this episode, we are going to take on Classic Mode as the Angel Pit. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. As always, 7.5, uh, there's Bowser's face, because we cleared Classic Mode with Bowser the last time, and now we are going to do so with Pit. Now, with Pit, Pit is, in my opinion, a good character. And really, it's hard for me to say whether or not there really are bad or good characters in Smash. I know that a lot of people have been saying that there are some cheap characters in Smash, like Meta Knight in Brawl, like Diddy Kong in this game, and I think that the, the coming update for Smash Wii U will even... I think it'll patch some things, and it will also... Also, I think balance the characters a little bit more. At least that's what I heard. I'm not sure if that's true. Don't take my word for it. Oh well. But anyway, right off the bat, we are fighting with Dark Pit here. But it would have been more epic if we were actually in a, a Kid Icarus stage, don't you think? Oh, but anyway, Pit is a nice character because he is... I think his, run, his running speed is a little bit faster than the average character. It... And I'm, I'm using Mario as the basis and as the as the measurement of an average character, you know, but But his moves are really they're really quick and I, I like his double swords I like his bow and all of that. So yeah pit is one of the characters that I do like playing as not one of my favorite characters But he is a good character nonetheless and there goes dark pit or not Now there goes dark pit. We sent him flying because he is no match for the real pit Pit 2 is no match for Pit! Oh. <laughs> it's funny because sometimes when the characters hit the screen like that, especially when you're playing with your friends, it can be pretty startling at times. Oh man. Oh, but that... That Super Sonic Final Smash, man. That Super Sonic Final Smash. One of my friends likes to play as, as Sonic, and whenever he would get the Smash Ball, it would be so difficult and so annoying. Oh my goodness, but... That's okay. You have to learn how to work around obstacles like that. Difficulties that arise. Struggles that arise. And here is the SS Drake and Joan. I know where Joan is from. Joan is from Animal Crossing, but I don't know where the SS Drake is from. Someone please enlighten me because I can't Google right now. Google during... Googling something during a recording session is not exactly the best thing to do if you know what I mean. But here we're going to fight Bowser in Yoshi's Island. Now we are actually in a stage that makes sense. You know, because of course Bowser belongs to a Mario World stage. And of course this stage is from Wii... Uh, not from Wii, excuse me. This stage is from Super Smash Melee, as you guys would remember. Now let me ask you a question. Have any of you played Project M? Because I have not. And I feel like a lot of people love Project M. I think that's just how it is. A lot of people prefer the way that the fighting worked in Melee. People prefer how quick the fighting was, how quick the combat was. Um, and I know that a lot because of that, a lot of people love the Project M mod. And for those of you that don't know, P Project M is basically... I, I guess you can call it a mod of, of uh, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. And it basically allows the fighting to run the same way that it did, or, or something similar to the way that it did in Melee. Because I know that there is there is a rather big difference between the, the, the fighting in Melee and the fighting in Brawl. The casual player might not be able to notice it, but most hardcore Smash players, most, most Smash players like myself would easily be able to tell the difference. And what's interesting to me is that in Project M, the developers of this mod are actually adding characters. Not long ago, they added, I believe it was Roy, they added Roy. And it wasn't just a, a character model change, but they actually changed his moveset so that it was just like the moveset in Melee. And I think that recently they added Mewtwo. But you know, we don't have to worry about that because Mewtwo is going to be in this game not too long from now. As a matter of fact, he's going to be released to those Club Nintendo users who registered both games of Smash Bros. this month. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to have to make a video of going through classic mode with 
both Lucas and Mewtwo once they come out respectively. And <laughs> this was an easy round, guys, don't you think? I don't know what it was, but but everyone just died. It's been less than a minute. It's only been around 40 seconds and already, specifically I think it was 38 seconds, but but already everyone is dead. Everyone is dead. Oh no. But that was round three. Let's move on to round four. This time I want to do another one-on-one. -on -one. Let's fight Robin, female version. Now Robin, of course, is from Fire Emblem. And I really don't have much to say about Robin, except this is not the stage where she belongs. Lilat Cruz is not the stage where she belongs, so I don't know what she is doing here. But she is here nonetheless. Star Fox is a sci-fi game, while of course Final, not Final Fantasy, Fire Emblem is more of a, a, a game that takes place in medieval times, you know? It's a lot of fantasy, it has a lot of fantasy elements with swords and magic and warriors and love and all of that. It's, I heard that it's a really great game, Fire Emblem Awakening, but unfortunately I haven't picked it up for myself quite yet. And in the Nintendo Direct that was recently aired on April 1, they did talk a little bit about the new Fire Emblem game that will be coming out, but to my surprise, it's actually going to be a while before the game actually comes out. It turns out that it's going to be released in 2016. It's going to be released in North America, anyway, in 2016, so that's interesting. I thought that it was going to come out sooner, but, you know, I don't really follow much Fire Emblem news, so... I guess that it's a given that I didn't expect that. Alright, but let's move on to round 5, the last round before our me battle. And it looks like that we are going to be taking on Mega Man, Shulk, and Bowser Jr. And I need to choose two teammates, so I'm going to go ahead and choose Bowser, the father of Bowser Jr., so that he can beat up his son. And Sonic, because Mega Man is not a Nintendo character, so let's have two non-Nintendo characters face off, you know? And I feel like a match between Pit and Shulk makes sense, even though I can't make some type of connection. It just seems like that would be a really interesting fight. Even though, even though this, the setting of this fight doesn't make any sense at all, I do not know why we are fighting in Onet, because Ness and Lucas are not here. I don't know why we're here, but let's just kick these guys' butts, because they need to be taken down quick, because they are evil, they are terrible people, you know that Bowser Jr. is an evil and terrible person, and I'm sure that Mega Man is now evil and terrible. He probably turned over to the dark side, that is why we are fighting him. And Shulk is now evil, okay? Let's go with that. That's a pretty good fan fiction right there. Let's, let's start with this fan fiction. One day, as Bowser Jr. was walking down the streets of Onet, he met with Shulk, and he asked Shulk, Would you like to be evil with me? And Shulk said, Certainly. And then that is the prologue of that great fan fiction. Do any of you guys write fan fiction? Out of curiosity, are any of you into that? And by the way, I'm, I am in no way judging anyone because I, I used to write fan fiction myself. And you know, if, if, I, if I still was in the mood to and if, if I still had the time to, I would write more fan fiction. When I was younger, when I was around 14 years old and 15 years old, I would write a lot of Tales of Symphonia fanfiction. Specifically, fanfiction that surrounded the- that- that told the story of the lives of uh, Lloyd Irving and Shina Fujibayashi, because they are two of my favorite characters. And not only are they two of my favorite characters, but I ship them, <laughs> okay? And when- whenever you ship two characters from an anime or a video game, you can't help but write fan fiction that just warms your own heart even. <laughs> of course, you, as a writer, you hope that the things that you write warm your own heart, but I found that the like just writing these stories for myself, it warmed my own heart and as I was writing these like romance uh, genre stories about Lloyd and Sheena, I was like, oh, oh, these characters, I love them so much. Oh, but in all honesty, I haven't played Tales of Symphonia in a long time. I think that I'm going to have to do a playthrough of Tales of Symphonia on my channel one time. I know that a lot of you, a lot of you now expect a bunch of Nintendo walkthroughs and a bunch of Nintendo Let's Plays on my channel because that's what I've been doing. I've been doing games like The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD, that series just ended. I've been playing games like Ocarina of Time, which is a series that I just started recently. 
And then of course Super Mario 3D World and now Super Smash Brothers. So a lot of games, if not all of the games that I have played so far are Nintendo games. But for those of you that have stuck around long enough, you'll remember that I did a playthrough, or I tried to start a playthrough of a game called Tales of Graces. And that game is by the same people that made Tales of Symphonia. It's part of the same series. So if you haven't yet, go ahead and check out Tales of Symphonia for yourself. It was a game that was originally released on the GameCube, so in a way it would suit the current content of my channel. But you know what, even, you know, even though it's not a Nintendo game, I still want to play it. I'm not gonna limit myself to only Nintendo games, even though those are my favorite types of games to let's play. I'm not going to limit myself to just those games. And what's cool is that I, I emailed, uh, I guess I'll say a representative of Bandai Namco, the company that published the Tales of Games, and I asked them Bandai Namco's stance, their current stance on releasing and producing um, YouTube content for some of their games. And while the representative couldn't give me like a, a clear cut answer on Bandai Namco's current policy with, you know, releasing such YouTube videos, he did say that they don't plan to take out, take down any of those content. So that's basically a green light for me. So someday I want to do a let's play of a Bandai Namco game. And you know what? I think I have an idea what my first Bandai Namco game will be. Because I, I was saying that, yeah, Tales of Symphonia is a great game to, to let's play, but that's, let's be real, that's a JRPG, so it's going to be rather long. What I was thinking was that I do a playthrough of Dragon Ball Xenoverse. That is, you know, one, once I pick it up. <laughs> I have to pick it up first before I can actually do a let's play of it. But man, I, I really want to play that game. I really want to play that game, mainly because it is the first Dragon Ball Z game in such a long time to not be hated by a majority of gamers and a majority of the fans, especially. I know that it's not, people have been saying that it's not a great game, but it's not a terrible game, so that's already okay with me. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z games haven't been known for being great. Like, for example, Tenkaichi 3. Uh, that is such an amazingly fun game. You you have no idea. If you haven't played that fighting game on the on the Wii, you have to. And I know that it's, it's really hard to find nowadays. It's hard to find a used copy of that game, but if you manage to get your hand on a copy, oh man, lucky you, because it is so much fun to play. But recently, I played it with my brother and with my friend, okay? with our neighbor. And looking at it, <laughs> playing it on a widescreen TV, playing it on the Wii, <laughs> which of course was not HD, you can see just how terrible the game looked. And just how terrible, like, like there are so many characters, but they kind of, they kind of played off the transformations of the Dragon Ball Z characters as being separate characters in and of themselves in a way. <laughs> Oh, but, like, the game itself looks terrible. It sounds terrible, but it is still one of the most fun games on the Wii. So that's just... that that just seems to be how Dragon Ball Z games tend to go. <laughs> I don't know. They're fun, even though... I don't know, there's something about them that's, <laughs> that's a little weird sometimes. Oh, uh, but yeah, I'm a huge Dragon Ball fan. Are you guys fans of Dragon Ball Z? I know that one of you guys who are, who are watching right now is a fan of Dragon Ball Z. Raxby! Shout out to Raxby! You guys should definitely check out his channel. Um, I believe that... Yeah, his username is Raxby on YouTube, so go ahead and check out his channel. Alright, let's... Let's finish this guy! Let's... Let's make our way to Dark Pits because... Oh, and not... <laughs> not... Pit 2, by the way. I'm talking about Shadow Pit. The one that will appear after we defeat this form of Master Core, and I have to be really careful, because if I die here, then I'm going to be so frustrated with myself, and I know that all of you are going to be so disappointed in me, and I know that most of you are already disappointed in me. <laughs> okay, so that's one way to dodge that attack. Just stay on the edge, and I think that you will be fine! No! Alright. Alright, so I will see you guys back at sword form. Alright, and here we are back at sword form. You know what, I came to the conclusion that fighting Master Core's Pit is hard. <laughs> it's hard stuff, okay? Because Pit doesn't really do that much damage with each attack, right? But it was really with his first form that I was having a hard time with. It, like, it, it took a long time to, to finish him off. 
I don't know what it was with dog form, but dog form was pretty quick to finish, but I don't know. This mode and and the first mode in the first form, I mean. Oh my goodness. Move, move. There you go. Even though, yeah, sword form is something to worry about, I need to make sure that I conserve my health for the sake of defeating Shadow Pit. And I'm not doing a very good job at that, am I? Alright, come on, let's just finish this guy, please. Please, let's just finish him off and do it quickly. Come on. Oh my goodness. Oh, I should've just edge guarded like before. <laughs> I should've just hung hung on the edge like before. That seemed to work. I think the problem is that his, his um, aerial A move doesn't do that much damage. And to to defeat his first form, and especially his um his uh, sword form, you have to do a lot of aerial attacks. The attacks that don't do a lot of damage. But with dog form, you could use his, you know, his ground A attacks, which do a decent amount of damage when charged. And it looks like this Shadow Pit is not doing so well. What's wrong, Shadow Pit? Come on, what you got? You got nothing on me? You're nothing like Pit 2. I was having a much harder time with Pit 2 in round 1 than I am with you, Shadow Pit, in round 7. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think he was... If he hit me with that, I think I might have died. No, if he hit me with that, I might have died. <laughs> Gotta be more careful here. If, I, if I'm not careful and if I get too cocky, someday I might just die to the hands of a Shadow Form. But it's... Uh, it, that day isn't today because we cleared round seven once again. Now let's just go ahead and get rid of this this sphere. Have you guys seen Game Theory's? Uh, I, I don't I don't know what the title is, but he was explaining that there's a there's a really dark backstory behind the Super Smash Brothers franchise. And if you haven't, you should go ahead and check out Game Theory's channel on YouTube and find that video. But looks like it looks like this is where we are going to end the episode for today. So thank you guys once again for tuning in. I will see you all in the next episode. So until then, take care.